good to see everybody. Uh, this is unique times. I'm glad that we can all meet like this. It's, it's, it's not too bad. Um, so I'm glad you all figured it out and got in here. And like Heather said, uh, this is awesome way to uh, re rewatch it with your spouse, with your significant other, with your partner, with with your kid, like anybody. Please use this and forward it to your family members. You all have this benefit. So, so this is for anybody and everybody. Honestly, it's not going to matter. So just you, as soon as we get that recording out and the PowerPoint and um, the handout, then you can use that. Um, and so a lot of people, we do that a lot, uh, send it out to people that weren't able to, to join or, or whatever. So, okay, so we'll get started. I'm Carol, um, I'm a clinical mental health counselor and a, and a certified family life educator and I love teaching. Never knew I was gonna be teaching um, classes like this, like uh, what, what did we do? Like um, a week ago I did a parenting during a pandemic, like I never thought I'd be doing that, um, but we're here, right? We're all here. So uh, anything we can take, this is just some information that you can take um, further with it if you want. I just, I'm just gonna throw out lots of good ideas. I'm gonna educate you on what mental health is because we have to really know what that is first. And there's some basics of mental health that, that I teach that um, hopefully will be helpful. So. Um, first of all, I just kind of real quick, uh, this is your, 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 your benefit, your bone cook cell benefit. Um, just so you know, uh, these are some of the, the options that you have. So we won't spend too much time on that. Okay. So this is what we're going to go over today. So first we have to know what balance is and how to stay in balance. So that is our physical, mental, social, and emotional slash spiritual. Now, some researchers and books put emotional and spiritual separate. Um, you know, go. I know several different people that do that, and then the some like Covey and other people put it. So, emotional and spiritual, I always fit together. So, there's four basics, and I'll go over that later. Um, we're going to prevent burnout with proactive behavior. We got to learn about our balance and then our behavior that comes with it, um, and then practicing coping skills, uh, mindfulness, maintaining um, some management of, of, our, of our emotions, all those kind of things. So that's the basics of what we're gonna go over. Um, so, so this is essential. So what mental health is, is how we feel, uh, well, think first, think, feel, and behave. So, so this, is, this is cognitive behavioral. This is like, so we have a thought that comes in, we have a feeling, and then we have a behavior. So of course, I want you to take notes on some things along the way in this next you know, 50 minutes that we have. As I'm talking, you can go through, okay, where, where do I start with this and where, and how, um, how is this affecting me right now? Um, and of course, you're gonna get this information PowerPoint later and you can go over it, but we gotta go with thoughts, feeling and behavior first. So here's a thought. We have all this thought that comes in, and this is, this is self-talk and physical reaction right after the thought. So self-talk happens in the frontal lobe, so I'm gonna talk about that. So we have to just go over these, these three basic areas of the brain. So we have a thought, then that, that sends us into an, a feeling, and then that sends us into a behavior, okay? So this little, um, this little picture of why coronavirus is triggering our mental health, I mean, you can see, um, uh, the mindset goes to survival instead of our basic routine that's like, oh, we're living, we're doing okay, and overnight we've had to go into some survival mechanisms, right? And so our fight, flight, or freeze is super awesome. It keeps us alive. And so we've had some traumatic experiences. I mean, add the earthquake to it of like, oh, I don't know, that's kind of weird. I, am I going to die right now? And your physiological body, because right after the thought, kicks in and then we have this physiological response system that keeps us alive and says hey something's not right uh do something you know <laughs> so i'm sure you guys all can now look back and see how that's um how that's working for us um this is for everybody this is for your cousins this is for your 
you know, like I said, any, we'll try to, you know, hit everybody in anything, any kind of family that you're in or, or whatever, but we've got to um, know that we have fear that's different now, right? So we have fear for our loved ones, we have fear for our health, we have fear for our jobs. We, so, so that's where we're at. I mean, so this is the acute stress um, situation. So this is our balance, okay? So we have to kind of know where our balance is. So I'm gonna go back to this thought, feeling and behavior, but we first go into balance, okay? So our basic balance is our physical, mental, social, and emotional, like I said. So physical, okay? So how we feel, you know, and how we behave is, is a lot to do with our physical, but you know, our diet, exercise, and sleep are so essential for all this. So our mental, mental health, of course, it is what we're talking about. Here's mental, our brain power, our judgment, what we learn, how we're stimulating our mind. Um, social, we, we've had that completely um, erupted, right? So, and our emotional, spiritual, uh, we're going to talk about emotional intelligence, how to ground, how to be connected that way in spiritual, spiritual ways. So, um, in the emotional ways. So just know that and have that um, as your basic four. So why, why it says time, energy, money? This is how I teach this: is your basic, your basic, basic balance has to do with these four, and it has to do with where your value system is. So where you put your time, energy, money, I can tell where people are in their balance is where you put your time, energy, and money. I mean, really. So it's like, here's my energy, here's my money, here's my time. Where do I put it in, in these four categories? So just look at that and, and we're gonna see, you, you wanna kind of see if you're out of balance in one of these because that adds to behavior and burnout that we're gonna talk about at the end of this. So, and if you have questions, you can chime in. I'll, I'll kind of stop here and there and say, okay, is everyone with me? And do we have any questions about this? So first of all, we have to know what our thoughts are and emotions. So this one's kind of a combination that I found a little mindful cycle. Um, so of course it says sound of, uh, we have to label the sound and the thoughts and the emotions. So first we have to label our thoughts. We have to know what we're doing in our thought system in our thought process. I mean, so I teach a thinking ears class and we, I constantly talk about thoughts first. How is our thinking doing? How, if we're overgeneralizing, if we're black and white, if we're jumping to conclusions, those are all thinking errors. So um, just observe, label, just know this is a little bit of an easy, uh, uh, you know, picture of mindful cycle. So if you have kids, you can put up a little, a little cycle, like, okay, wait, let's observe. This is, you know, let's label it. Uh, how am I reacting? And then how's the response system? How do I re relax myself? So just keep that in mind, because that's how the brain works also. Um, it, it's exactly like this. So we want to be able to get to the calm part. What happens in acute stress or fight or flight, we don't get to the calm part and stress response. So if we're in high stress, we're not getting to the calm part as much. And that's what I'm gonna talk about at the end of this is how to calm the brain, how to calm the mind, how to, how to have coping uh, mechanisms that are um, able to relax the auto, auto, you know, the auto, the nervous system, the automatic response, and then balance. So that's what this little mindful cycle that I found was perfect. It was like, okay, yes. Yeah. We've got to have balance of those four basic, um, our you know, our four basic balances of, of emotional and physical and, emo and mental and social. So, um, okay. So I, I mentioned some thinking errors. So here's our thought first. So we have the definitions. I'm just going to leave this up here for a second. I'm not going to spend a lot of time on them. I do have like a full just a PDF of, of these definitions, but you're gonna have this. So as I was saying, if we can kind of write down like, okay, what kind of thinking errors am I having right now during this time? Let's just talk about right now. Um, am I absolute black and white? 
Am I jumping to conclusions? Am I emotionally filtering? So number four and number five on here, if you can't see it, I'll try to, you know, because I sometimes I forget that some people are just on their phones and they can't see my PowerPoint. But um, the, the mental and emotional filter is right here. So we have frontal lobes and it says using only one of the two is a thinking error. So if we make decisions only with emotion, it's a thinking error. If we make decisions only logically, it's a thinking error. So we need to use both of them together. That's called wise mind. Um, and that's a practice. That takes some work. Um, in the genders, of course, we're a little different in that way. Men stay in their logical brain a little more. Women stay in their emotional brain a little more. So we want to switch you over to logical and switch you over to emotional. And there's ways to do that. That's a whole other class. But it, it's just this is really good awareness of your thoughts because we want to make sure we're not having thought process um, errors uh, that add to feeling and behavior because it always reaches to a behavior. So we want to curve the behavior. So we have to know these first. Um, so jumping conclusions, uh, magn magnifying, uh, you know, we shrink the positive, we, we focus on the negative. Yeah, so just watch these and that's all, you know, just watch them. Um, and if anyone has, so, so the self-talk that I talked about, like up here when we're in the frontal lobes, we're still self-talking. So, um, the self-talk question, it's super, super simple. And this actually comes from a book, um, a little bit to, it's a combination. Um, and I didn't put that in the resources. I'll probably, I'll add that. Um, the, uh, Crucial Conversations talks about how to self-talk your, your thinking ears story out of, you know, out of the way. So thinking ears are not facts. And usually they're thinking ears stories. So we make up stories to help ourselves. And this is still in the thought process. So you have to ask yourself, is this true? How do I know it's true? How does this make me feel? And then what if I didn't hold this belief? Because if we hold the belief, the thinking ears story, then it leads to a feeling and a behavior. And then it's repetitive. So this is the little, um, you know, what can I control? Um, it's like I can't control the actions of others. I can control what I do with social media, with social distancing, with um, following recommendations of who, you know, of my therapist, of my doctor, of my boss, of my, you know, those kind of things. Um, how we react to others uh, is is you know is our is our reaction and we have control over that so uh okay so is everyone good with thoughts that was just a little we're doing thoughts feeling and behavior so i'm going to move on through to feelings and emotion unless anyone wants to raise their hand and say okay i'm having i i, I didn't get thoughts but <laughs> and you could also uh chat send a chat to to Heather and we can ask those questions at the end. So chime in if you need to interrupt me. Um, so emotions and secondary emotions are my uh, forte, I guess. I, I love to emotionally coach and teach current emotional coaching. I'm, I'm a play therapist. I'm a, you know, I guess I'm a really emotionally focused therapist. And so um, this is super important because we have to know what we're feeling in order to go to the next step, which is the behavior. So, so this is off of one of my, uh, my little handout that I have made and um, that I'll send as a PDF too. And it's just um, the first two steps of finding an emotion, um, making sure you know what your secondary emotions are. Um, now, how I call them secondary emotions, primary emotions, sad, mad, shame, happy, scared. Um, and we mostly, and Brene Brown quotes this all the time, is like, most of the adults, we know what this, you know, what we're feeling, which is happy, you know, um, pissed off or sad. I mean, that's pretty much what we live in, you know, um, in her, her research. And she and I and, and many other people 
uh, the, the average is what we want you to know and have and label every single day. I have people label and find 30 secondary emotions of the whole day, just in one day. We should know 30 secondary emotions. So this is my wheel I'll send out. So here's the primary emotion. These are all the secondary emotions. Um, if you can't see my video, they're just primary in the middle and secondary, all these words of betrayed and resentment and outrage and annoyed and jealous and hurt and lonely and inadequate and overwhelmed and you know discouraged. And then on the other side, you know, happy and peaceful, we feel content and relief and safe and worthwhile and trusted and created um, and respected and motivated and or we feel grounded. So those are all secondary emotions. We should be able to find 30 of those a day. That's that's normal. We want you to be all over the place and what's going on is just what's going on. And so um, and 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 if you when you get this handout, the outside says grief, loss, and trauma, and powerless, and I'm going to explain that in a minute. Um, so what's happening is we need to just be aware of what's, what we're feeling so we can release the fight, flight, or freeze, which is back here, our midbrain, on what I was talking about. Wise mind, frontal lobes is where we reason and make decisions is here. So this is where we want to keep uh, with reasoning so we can make great decisions. Um, now, fight, flight, or freeze keeps us alive also so we make good decisions in that but it's it's a it's a we have to get out of it eventually um and so rating your emotion one to ten is just another way to to see the level so i just do one to ten ten being a strong emotion so if you have a strong emotion for the day that out kind of hijacks everything else like frustration or overwhelm then that's a nine for the day if it hijacked everything else um, then it's a strong emotion for the day. If you had a panic, if you threw up, if you hit the wall, if you, you know, whatever your tens look like, that's a strong emotion with a behavior of a strong emotion after. So, um, so that's kind of how I rate it, just one to 10, 10 being strong. doesn't matter. You can be content all day and you could be an eight or a nine, it's content. Um, and so that would, that would be your top emotion that was the highest number of the day. So how you experience emotions is, of course, we don't want you to block your stuff and push it away because those separates are into volcanoes, that means your magic turn. Um, you be a witness to your emotion, no, no judgment, be present, five senses. So I'm gonna talk about being present. Um, I'm gonna talk about five senses a little bit because that's what, how you have to be present. So that's mindfulness, a little bit of that stuff later on. So. So there's your secondary emotions kind of rundown um, and how to get to your secondary emotion. Uh, I would challenge to write down as much as you can through this process of like, okay, um, how, how am I doing? Where am I at? Um, because we don't want to stuff those during this time. Um, and with that said, I'm gonna do a little disclaimer here. So, the thing is, is um, about this stuff, um, the unknowns and the unseen. During this time, there is lots of unknowns and unseen. And if you have children, please uh, just explain this to them. And, and then you, you kind of give yourself permission to step back and say, well, we're doing awesome. We're doing the best we can right now. And it doesn't matter. So full permission. I don't add things to people's plate. I want you to take things off your plate. Because in this time, if we're in acute stress, uh, which most of us are, so um, it's, a, it's a time of an unseen unknown. And so it's a very traumatic time. So if like on the emotional will that I showed, um, if, it, if we're in grief and loss, if we're in grief, loss, and trauma, Okay, got that down. <laughs> I mean, come on, you know. Okay, let's have a, let's have some fun. I could list all the things I've lost. Um, yeah, I really like going to restaurants. I really like social. I really like going to the movies. Um, I have a reward system on those kind of things, right? That was my reward system. So I've had to get creative. Like everybody and all my clients, we've 
we've had to get creative about a reward system of changing from loss to gain. So how all the all the losses that I've had, how do we gain it to, you know, or add it, you know, uh, gain from a loss. So here's my losses, and I have, you know, and everyone has a list of losses, and then, uh, what's my gain from that? And that's where our value system switches and our time, energy, and money goes to different things. Have we not ate at home way more in the last couple of weeks? I did a class last week on that and parenting of like what the importance is of, of eating at home and the statistics on that with the family. So we've eaten at home some more. We've spent some more time being like trapped with each other and that might add to some agoraphobia but if anyone has some trapped feelings then it's like oh my gosh i'm trapped with somebody or i'm trapped in this situation and that's a that's a little agoraphobia starting like so that's that's a whole that's another you know traumatic um um you know just just that's that's happening so so that's a feeling if i feel trapped um then we have to add something to that to get us untrapped right? So if we can't go to the gym because I feel trapped at home uh, because the gyms are closed, then we have to come up with this other short-term uh, gain. So, so this is the differences between these um, unknowns and unseen. The unknowns and unseen, number one, earthquake. Number two, virus. Very unseen. So when we have an unseen trauma, it's like times, I would say a thousand on the brain because we can't make sense of it. And we're trying to wrap our head around our brain going, I can't make sense of this. The news is this, and I can't, I didn't see the earthquake. I didn't know, you know. So our brain goes into some, some reactions, okay? So here's, the, here's the, the rundown of those main, you know, uh, from a traumatic event, acute stress, one month, short term. So this little stress, the, the three types over here, in this little picture, it, it basically follows this. So, and then here's an adjustment. So we'll go back to acute stress. So we have, we have symptoms for one month, okay? So, you know, we can say, okay, we're kind of having some acute stress. It's a one month thing. We don't know what, you know, how long these symptoms are gonna continue. And so then if they do continue after that one month, guess what we got, an adjustment. So, and those can, that can last for about six months. I talk to parents about this all the time, about after a kid has moved or even moved schools, um, it's a huge adjustment on the brain because all your environments have been completely disrupted. So I want you to write down right now how many adjustments you're in your environment, there's actually nine main environments, have been disrupted. I mean, your daily your daily routine. What has been a what's been an adjustment? I mean, I bet you, we could all write down at least 15, like right now. Like, well, my kids are at home, or I've had to work from home, or I've lost my job, or I don't, you know, I don't see my family, or I don't have these gatherings that were traditions that kept my social life and my social balance intact. Um, so, just think about write down like all the adjustments that we're having. And so it, it's all just, it's nothing to do about it right now. It's just awareness. And then after that six months, we go into, um, you know, we could do some, some post-traumatic, right? So in between the adjustment and post-traumatic, if you have symptoms that are continuing, that is when we need treatment. So the brain doesn't go into neural pathways of routine and action of, of this is not, this is what's happening. We want treatment in between there um, so it doesn't turn into post as much, right? So that's long-term, that's chronic stress. So that's just a little bit of education on that um, and how to help your mental health because we have to know where we're, what level we're at. If you're at acute stress, if you're in adjustment, if you're post, you know, three to six months plus, and that's long-term acute stress um, or chronic stress, I mean. So, and then here's the, emotions behind these and this is this is the, the symptoms that we're going to have of emotion is loss grief and power right so talks about that already and those are the unseen and un, 
um, unseen versus seen is I, I kind of already talked about. So, um, uh, well, the scene, a, a scene, a traumatic scene would be, you know, you can see someone ill. Uh, you know, I always explain this as if someone you know is is uh, suffering from cancer, and you can see their illness, you can see them declining or 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 going through chemo, and there's physiological changes. You can see that trauma. You can see that, and there's lost grief and powerless, but you can see it, and so it your brain makes sense of it, and you know what it is. But this kind of stuff um, is different when it's unseen. Okay, so. Everybody with me, let's see. We're about halfway, so cool. Um, so we're to the behavior. So we've done the, the thought and we've done the feeling, and now we're to the behavior. They all are in a circle um, and they all feed on each other, okay? So this is just some behavior part. So, because remember our mental health is how we feel, how, uh, what we think, what we feel, and what we, and what we act on. So. So here's our acting, here's our burnout. Um, we kind of have to know if we're in burnout because it, we don't do so well with our um, coping skills if we are in burnout. So the five stages of burnout, the honeymoon, okay. Um, uh, the honeymoon stage I've dealt with a lot with my foster kids. Or they, were, they, they were in a, a, a kind of an acute stress, you know, all the time, but the first month, they're definitely in a honeymoon stage of acute stress. Um, so they're not into the burnout stage yet. And then the onset of stress comes, and then the chronic stress comes, and then burnout, and then habitual burnout. So on on um, the other side of the screen here is the basic reactions of our balance, because that's why I went over your balance, your mental, your social, your emotional, and your physical. So these are all Quarter, quarterly, correlated in those four balances. So here's what you can correlate. So if you're physically burned out right now because you haven't worked out and you're not sleeping, and oh my gosh, there's some serious sleep, um, some sleep coping skills that um, I might have time to go over in the end because sleep is my number one issue with a lot of my clients and especially now. And that adds to burnout because after two days of not having REM sleep, we have these cognitive um, reactions, short-term memory problems, judgment impaired, racing thoughts. Um, we focus on the negative. Um, we actually have dementia symptoms uh, after two days of not having REM sleep. And if anyone wants to look up REM sleep, uh, put, write that little note down. We have to have REM sleep to repair the brain. So it affects our cognitive for sure. Then it goes into emotional. We're more impatient, we're depressed, we're anxious, we're hopeless, we're more confused. And then behavioral, oh, we, we get increased uh, habits, right? Um, sleep disturbances, impaired listening skills, withdrawal, aggression. So that's awesome for our relationships, right? So if we're in burnout, our relationship skills don't really work so good. And when I'm working with a couple, it's like, okay, if someone's completely in burnout or habitual burnout, we have really hard time with listening skills and we withdraw more and it's not going to help your relationship. Um, so we've got to get out of burnout um, or manage that burnout to a point where we can, can get, uh, you know, back to just like onset of stress, which happens all the time. We're in stress all the time, not chronic stress. Um, and then the physiological, uh, heart rate, increased in fatigue, you know, illness and stomach problems. Oh, um, you know, we, we have headaches and, and increased uh, pain. Um, and so that kind of sounds like, you know, that nausea and dizziness and aches. Um, it sounds like a headache. No, it doesn't. It sounds like a heart attack. It's like, so, so look at the symptoms here, burnout reaction and a panic attack or heart attack. They, they have the same symptoms. But you so make sure that, you know, we go to the doctor and make sure the physiological part um, is okay before the mental part of the burnout comes in. But, but it really restricts um, being in chronic stress, mood, memory, motivation management of just our life. So um, this, is a, this is an issue 
And if you were already a little burned out uh, before we hit some pandemic uh, crisis and stuff, then this is gonna add to it. So hopefully there'll be some skills in here that you can start practicing. Like I said, I'm not gonna add to your plate, but take things off your plate. Take some things off your plate that helps your burnout. Um, we've got to sleep uh, and physical. Sleep and diet is, uh, uh, is really important to know. Um, any questions so far? Should we take a, anybody want to chime in on what your normal level of functioning is? What, what we're used to? Uh, that question up at the top of this PowerPoint is, we're used to this. I think we're pretty chronically stressed out anyways. But has anyone moved into burnout since the last couple of weeks or anybody want to chime in? Do we have any chat going? Um, you can Not chat in. That's going. Um, me personally, though, I've been feeling burnout from mm -hmm. trying to coordinate all these webinars. <laughs> but I know they're awesome and they're needed and and it feels good in helping people but sometimes it's just a lot so I feel that so we so so some people in their jobs have added stress because we've added this rush of like oh we need to do this and this and this right so it depends on what industry you're in right and some other ones have completely dropped out and people have lost their jobs so Heather's talking about yeah so what we did was we bumped up these we usually do a couple of these a month and I do a parenting one every month. But what we have done is we've bumped up. We've, I think we've done like five extra ones last week, the last week and a half of, of just because there's a need. And so I would just, um, you know, I, you know, this is awesome. I mean, I, I think it's, it's a complete miracle that we can add these for free and we can do these webinars and everyone's staying at home and we can add this but it is stressful um that yeah I've, to do a powerpoint in a couple of days and like and research i do a lot of research before i teach a class um and this is new stuff but not really new stuff this is this is this thinking errors are not new and burnout stages are not new and um but it just adding to the pandemic or the coronavirus or the financial stress um or kids being out of school that's all new there's never happened before. This has never, ever, ever happened before. So give yourself permission to just step back, take things off your plate and go, you know what, I don't know how to do this. Uh, school is not the most important thing right now. I full permission to not stress over school. That's one of the tips that I found when, in my research was like, well, you know, of course I'll talk about that parenting next week, but like, it's just, just, it's not the most important thing. It's really not. It's important to stay in the acute stress and, and figure out our emotions and, re, you know, and record that and keep it from being stuffed. And so we can get through it without being in burnout reaction and chronic stress or habitual stress or habitual uh, burnout at the end of this. So, so that's, that's the goal of trying to catch this now and doing a class like this. So we need to catch this now and go into the cognitive, emotional, behavioral, and psychological reactions and going, wow, how many of those are you having? What's your normal of functioning before this and after this of like, wow, I've got this one. Oh, I have short-term memory. I have judgment impaired. I'm having racing thoughts. I mean, that's, I mean, attention. I mean, who's, who's really present right now? You know, <laughs> we're like actually zoned out a little bit. So. So, so that's, a, that's the brain. Yeah. Sorry, Kara. We have a few um, comments coming in now. Okay. So okay. quite yeah. a few. So buckle up. Let's have a couple. couple <laughs> like, let's have a couple said, of them. Yeah. A couple so of them. Said, I have noticed that my spouse is more irritable and more easily frustrated. Any advice on how to assist him during this time? I should add he is in law enforcement. Okay. So this makes sense, right? Because look at the look at the reaction. We're more so emotionally irritability, frustration, impatience, hopelessness, confusion. That's under emotional. So he so if, if we're having those things going on, that's just note it and say, okay, how can I help? Well, number one 
is patience <laughs> and recognizing it and taking time out. And we'll get into the mindfulness and coping skills at the end of this. But it's like, wow, okay, we're all recognizing this. People are a little bit more irritable, like little Facebook fights and like, yeah, it's, and of course, you know what? I mean, I'm a, I'm a certified domestic violence counselor. Domestic violence has tripled in a week. And Utah's rates are high as it is nationwide. They're higher. They've always been higher. So we've got to say, okay, we're really frustrated and irritable right now. We need to have a break. So number one is just patience and taking a break and saying, nope, I'm not going to fight right now. I'm not going to do this right now. It's not worth it. Um, and having those coping skills that I talk about at the end. But recognizing it and being able to hopefully talk about it. Um, because his fight or flight or freeze is just kicking in. And that's just what, what he's meant to do. And that's what we're meant to do as humans. It kicks in. And it, and it says, you're going to survive. You're not going to die. So makes sense. Okay. And then just some a comment. Someone said, I had burnout more in the beginning. I'm feeling more motivated since setting up a new work from home space. Mm -hmm. Good. And then sent some perfect said, idea. Right. And you just did your office, your home office. You were talking. I did. I, I just repainted new blinds. I got this whole setup. So I have a door. I had it in my living room. I had a desk in my living room. I carried everything upstairs. It makes, oh, me super happy. So, yep. Okay. And then the next one said, any tips for grinding teeth due to stress? I don't think I did that before, but I've noticed it a lot lately and it's causing headaches. Okay. So you've got to do some mindfulness in that, right? Um, magnesium is one of the best things for tension and sleep. So I didn't put that in this PowerPoint. I did last time. Magnesium, magnesium, magnesium at night. Vitamin D3. This to increase, you know, I talked about um, how to increase your, your, your immune system. So vitamin D3 and magnesium together is the top two. And there's like not four, but. Top two, magnesium, tension, headaches, take it at night. And the citrate is the best kind for mental health and sleep and stomach and everything. And it keeps your heart in rhythm. It keeps, it's an, it's an anti-inflammatory natural muscle relaxer, natural sleep aid. But yeah, so that's what happens is everything tightens, right? So our fight, flight, or freeze, our brain is in a cognitive state of fight, flight, or freeze. And that adds stress. So here's the onset of stress. And um, then we don't want to get to chronic stress. We want to combat that. So is that good? Okay. And then just a comment. Somebody said, I'm definitely on the onset of stress. We have been struggling to get groceries out on the stores right now in my state. And it worries me with my kids at home. And then we've got someone that said which I like this too. They said, I felt less burnout since I saw a quote that said, it's okay not to be as productive during a global pandemic. Yeah. Take things off your plate. Don't add to them. Yes. And that, so this is all, what all you're talking about is power. So how do we take back power? Because if we're in loss, grief, and trauma, that's fine. We're going to be in that. But how, but when we're in powerless, that means we're in, in a crisis. So how do we take us back to just the loss, grief, and trauma? I'm not going to, I have loss and grief. I'm not going to be able to go into a restaurant. I'm not going to be able to go back to my life, all of us, for a while. So, so how do we just have power over that part? We have to find power over it. So what do we do? We set up our office. We walk outside. We do some of these things. We find help. We go into therapy. Um, we talk about it. So yes, all those things. And then the burnout of you won't get to the burnout because you're doing something about your power that you need to you know find it's just power over it yep and then a couple more comments a lot of people are talking about just trying to balance school and work and how yeah. they like that you've you've been talking about taking stuff off your plate because it just feels so overwhelming yep. um right. and 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 don't get, put pressure so, so powerless and pressure, I have all these favorite P words. So just don't put pressure, add pressure to your kids, to yourself, because that adds to the powerless. 
pressure doesn't work. And then the last one that ends up with, with when you're doing lots of pressure and powerless, it's perfectionism. So now I can perfect. Uh, you know, that's not going to happen. The schoolwork doesn't have to be perfect. The house doesn't have to be perfect. Nothing has to be perfect. So, because that's a black and white, that's, that's number one thinking here is never and always. I never do this. You never always do that. You, you, you never keep your room clean. You always, that's, that's a thinking here. So, yeah. Okay. And then people are just kind of, you know, saying what they're stressed about. Um, but somebody did ask, can you please include more detail about the magnesium? Yes. Okay. So magnesium. This is my so so real quick and it, and it's not on this PowerPoint, but um so if you want to write it down. So these are your mental health supplements that we are lacking. You cannot get vitamin D3 from the sun. You can look up Dr. Berg on YouTube and he talks all about any of this. So we need to take you know vitamin D3 um a, a very a, actually a pretty large amount of that if I'm gonna say that. And you have to take that because you don't absorb it from the sun. And that helps your uh, vitamin D3, D as in dog, D3, um, is a hormone that's a vitamin, the only one that is, that runs our mood in our brain. And it helps your immune system also since we're concerned about our immune system right now. So this is how to calm this next this next page I'm on is how to calm the auto Immune, you know, the auto, the automatic, uh, the automatic, um, automatic nervous system. And this is some supplements that actually help that. Okay. So zinc is a really good one. Your B vitamins during the day, these are all day vitamin B3, zinc, uh, B vitamins, your B complex. And then these are the top four that I have people get on. Now, the last one is magnesium. It's taken at night, it is a natural muscle relaxer calming the nervous system, calming your inflammation, because here's stress. The, the stress that sends us into this is your stress hormones. Very basic stuff here I'm talking about, just your stress hormones. So it, we have to combat um, our nervous system with these, and we have to calm our nervous system. And so these are some of the things that do that with, with our mental health. And so magnesium is one of the best things to treat mental health. So it's 400 to 800 megs. Um, I have a list for kids. It starts at like 250 all the way from a three-year-old all the way up to 18. So just look at the, you know, you figure out your dosages. I'm not a doctor, but I am a clinician. I am a clinical therapist that uh, has research on this. And so the vitamin D3 and the magnesium together is very essential because the, the magnesium helps the vitamin D3 absorb into your system and all your other vitamins and your what you eat and everything. So magnesium helps it absorb into your muscles, your bones, um, everything. And so we don't get it from water. We haven't drank out of streams in 100 years. We don't get magnesium. We don't get enough of it. Um, it we're probably depleted in as much as vitamin D3, um, especially in Utah. When we come out of an inversion, I don't call it seasonal depression. I call it vitamin D3 deficiency. Um, people are like, yeah, I have seasonal depression. I'm like, yeah, so we need vitamin D3. And so both of those are really good for your immune system. So take it at night. So these are the three ways. Pill, spray, there's a magnesium spray on, on Amazon that I buy all the time. Um, and Calm, uh, it's C-A-L-M. That's in a drink form, so you can give it to your kids that way. Uh, it, that's the citrate kind. Um, and one more, there's four. So your Epsom salt in a bath. That is straight magnesium. That's why it feels so good. And it's good for your muscles and it helps your achy muscles and everything. That's magnesium. So take it in a pill form also. So you can do all those kind of things to calm your nervous system with magnesium. And that's that good. Yep. And then a couple more questions. Um, do you give the same advice for somebody that's in habitual burnout? Like mm -hmm. can't so, get it. So habitual. Habitual is therapy and some serious weekly balance. Um, and then we go through those steps of stages of change to get to, um, to self-discipline first, delaying gratification, then we have to have a reward system, and then we go into motivation. So changing a whole a, a habit of very long-term, three to six months of changing 
those behavioral habits, um, I call it routine. It's just changing your routine. That's the way you get out of that. Um, you have to, if you've been in habitual, um, it might not just be habitual. It, it turns into clinical depression. It, cl it turns into other clinical stuff. And so if, if you're in habitual and you're in there for a while, it could just be, you know, clinical depression too. So that needs to be treated. So. Okay. And then one more question before we move on. Um, someone okay. said, I realized in person, social interactions and physical contact like hugs helps me with stress and it's overall positive for my mental health. Obviously right now with so social distancing, it is not allowed. What is some advice you could give about that? So with my parenting, I did a couple ideas on that too. So of course we're like, oh my gosh, um, okay, so I love Marco Polo, I, you know, all this stuff that's like creative. We gotta get creative, we gotta get fun, we gotta have some humor. So connecting as much as possible, right? Same with me, it's like, wow, uh, it feels so good to like, you know, and I had my grandkids over like Monday, and I'm like, oh my gosh, like I, I wasn't too worried about it, but I was like, I haven't seen them for a while. And I was like, okay, you sit over there, and, but I just want to hug them. And, and it's like, okay, how do we do this? This is so new. This is so strange for our brain. So we've got to get creative to combat that, whatever that looks like, and, and send dopamine. So when you hug and touch, it sends dopamine and serotonin to the brain, okay? So of course, your significant other, and other people, and I have lots of single friends on um, there. We're we're really struggling, you know, in in that in that sense. And so it's like, here's your butter half, okay, and your kids, you know, it's like, you know, we're doing our best. And then here's distancing from everyone else. So um, do do the best you can um, with be getting creative. But yeah, so so basically, you have to find other ways to send dopamine to your brain, which is jumping jacks and exercising and music and calming mindfulness and all this stuff and walking um and on that all sends lots of dopamine to the brain but also vitamin d3 stuff too so so our focus so this is really big since we're we're talking about what's right now okay so this is what i've kind of turned to the last couple of weeks with a lot of people and a lot of my um substance abuse groups that i teach and therapy i've um the focus has to be on what's right in front of you. You have to turn everything to what's right in front of you. So right now, what are you doing? So when you're eating, it's right now. It's, 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 it's what's in front of you right now. Look around. Say, what am I focusing on right now? We have to get back to that simple focus. And this is a little bit of mindfulness. So letting go of thoughts of past and future without judgment. That's mindfulness. Um, pause throughout the day to present mindfulness to yourself. Um, walking, eating, imagery, body scan. And I put a couple links down here on this PowerPoint. If you can't see it, hopefully you'll get it later. But it's freemindfulness.org, um, livingwell.org. So there's, there's two, and they're both free. And you can download anything on there and use this. So I'm going to do, I've got to demonstrate, I want to demonstrate these um, three ways to calm the nervous system, the automatic nervous system that is, a, is an automatic response system that goes into to play into stress and fight, flight, or freeze. Um, and so these are three ways to calm it. Now, this is if you're still self-talking. If you're at an eight to a 10, good luck. You're not going to do this stuff, okay? And so if you have a kiddo that's having extreme panic or anxiety, or you are, this is about, this is afterwards, this is before, this is just during the day when you are self-talking up here, because fight or flight spot here. So we want to calm it after and before on a regular basis. So if you're in habitual, whoever was in habitual um, chronic, you know, stress or burnout, your brain hasn't been here for a really long time. And it's exhausting. It is exhausting on your system. And your stress hormones are so strong in your brain and your neural pathways just say, nope, that's what you do. That's what you do. That's what you do. You got to change. And we have science to show that we've got to change our neural. We can change our neural pathways. This is how you do it with continuous routine and maintenance of this. So four square breathing. 
this is how it goes. It's just four squares. It's and I have kids and everybody counts on and, and using your so if you can't see me, I'm pointing with my thumb to my fingers up for so it's basically four seconds, but you're breathing up for and you're holding it for four and then letting it out for four and waiting for and then doing it four times. So this is something that kids can do under their desk. You can do it under your desk. You can do it anywhere, anytime when you're sitting in a light, you know, and you're just stressed out or you feel your body coming on with this natural nervous system that hits us and you're just, just something triggered that maybe, we don't know, so a thought. And that's what happens sometimes in a feeling. Um, but then here's your behavior. You have power over your behavior. You can quickly breathe. You can do that anywhere, any place, anytime, anywhere. So that's one that's just anywhere, any place. No one will know you're doing it um, before bad. Um, statistically, if I had myself wired up and I did that for you know four times, your heart rate drops three times um, lower than it was before. So um, the next one is tracer color. So I have, and I, I they're in my office, in my other office, and. Um, and I do have a book here that's mine that I, so it's like basically um, you're going to trace and you're going to any coloring book, any adult coloring book. Um, but I have like um, these, these just these designs. So you can make up your own. You can just trace anything. I mean, if I went and trace like, you know, words or, or images, so they're just lines. So you put it in front of you. I get a chopstick, you know, your chopstick from the, Chinese store uh, from the restaurant. Um, I just steal a couple Chinese chopsticks and I don't use it because I, you know, and I, and I have these chopsticks in my office for kids or anyone to, to do a, a calming, um, a, a, a calming uh, intervention. And so you use a chopstick because it's long and it's, and it's wooden and you can use your five senses that way and you're just tracing with the chopstick. So um, you can use anything, uh, pencils fine. But you're just tracing or coloring. Um, it, it is a very calming frontal lobe. You know, it, it brings you to your frontal lobes. So focus point. I switched the name to this just because it's easy. Okay. So focus point. So this is your pen. Get a sharp object that you can focus on. Okay. So really quick, I'm going to show you how to do this. Um, so basically, you want it about six inches away from your face. So you're going to focus on the tip for three seconds. So this is a brain thing, okay? Same thing with the tracing. I mean, the breathing is a brain thing too, but it's a little different. This is a real deep brain thing because you're using your eyes. Our eyes are very important. REM sleep, EMDR. They both have an eye connected. Um, uh, yeah. So, so those two things. So REM sleep, of course, we need it because our eyes move back and forth. That's what we get into the REM sleep, it repairs the brain. This is one way that you can quickly go into calming your nervous system. So here's the point, three seconds. Okay, I'm looking at the point, if you can see my, and then for three seconds, you're, you're focusing on the point, then three seconds, you're going beyond it and going to the wall. So you're looking at the wall or whatever's in front of you, right? So then three seconds there, back to three seconds, then three seconds to the wall, on three seconds here, and keep doing that. Um, up to even five minutes. You need, you know, for a good five minutes, you're going to bring your nervous system down very quickly. Um, and even just doing that and me focusing on this, of course, my my breath goes lower, my heart rate goes lower. You feel yourself calming down. So that's a quick little uh, intervention that you can do pretty much anywhere else. So um, here's, we want to get to the coping, okay? So here's some, a list. Um, if you can't see the screen, I'll go over it a little bit. Here's some family. I kind of put the family and then just the self, these are little checklists, okay? So you can checklist this off. Um, I should do a power, a, a PDF of just these little checklists so you can go through and check, like, checklist it off. But so family. Good distraction, 10 minutes to two hours is a good distraction. Avoidance is two hours plus. 
So think about what you're doing for avoidances in the brain. It, it turns into avoidance. If you watch TV, if you game, oh, gaming, we had a record on March 15th of 50 million people gaming at the same time. And most of them were in Italy. Uh, I saw that statistic. It was fun. Um, so, so anything two hours plus, we're now into an avoidance stage in our brain. Okay? Not good. Stop. Do something else. Come back to it. Work, housework, whatever it is. Um, just homework, especially like, you know, you got to take a break. So 10 minutes to two hours is a good distraction. So go watch a movie together for two hours. It's a perfect distraction. You zone out for a minute, but don't go into avoidances. Active, creative play. Um, we've got to get active with our creativity. That's the biggest way, one of the biggest ways besides exercise to combat burnout and depression. Okay. Screen time, limit it. Increase humor. I've been super funny. I, I think I haven't been quite as funny like in my groups and like as, as much as I have. But man, you just got to laugh at it. You got to laugh at things. You got to make fun of the toilet paper situation. I think it's science. It's just science to me um, because bedroom, bathroom, and kitchen are the most essential rooms in our brain and the most safest rooms. So we need to take back the power in those rooms. So when we don't have power, we we do things, yeah. So we've got kitchen and bathroom going. Um, so time timer as your boss. So I wanted to kind of explain that. So make the time your boss. Make it 10 minutes. I'm gonna I'm gonna meditate. I'm going to mindful do mindfulness. I'm going to stretch. I'm gonna walk. Make the time your boss and schedule it. Here's some reach out. Here's um, Utah Safe app. It's an app. Um, that is for, I have it right here. Um, it looks like this. So it is um, for, for depression, anxiety, suicide prevention, grief loss, bullying, drug and alcohol problems, self-harm, relationship difficulties, any life challenge. Download the app. Download the app. It is confidential. It's free, of course. You can chat, text privately. If you're worried about someone, Utah um safe app okay i can't do enough of that stuff um suicide hotline domestic violence crisis line so here's your self balance so your mindfulness reducing your caffeine um all those kind of things will help a reward system taking many vacations so many vacations um those are imagery you can pretend that you're going on vacation. I've been doing a lot of it. So you just, I, you have to, you know, cause I, I, you know, I have to go to my vacation spot that I can't go to. So do it in your head. Your brain doesn't know the difference. Okay, so that's it. How's everybody going? Everybody stay with me. So how, how are we doing, Heather? <laughs> Good, we have one question <laughs> and then we'll end it okay. for today. So someone said, what are some tips for dealing with stress of caring for children slash schooling while working? Okay. So we're, it's called juggling. I was kind of joking about, because I'm kind of funny, like I was telling you, I was going to start this, you know, this PowerPoint with me juggling something. And I was like, what can I juggle? Um, I have my hula hoop here that's for kids, like to keep your safe place, to, keep, to make a safe place. Uh, if you don't want anybody to, you know, touch you, just take your hula hoop everywhere and they can't go inside your hula hoop. Um, it's, it's fun to juggle, right? So, so it's called do the best you can and it's difficult. So, so how, you know, how are we doing that overnight with juggling school and everything? It is, it's balanced and it's timer is the boss. The best thing for kids is here's your boss, the timer, buy a timer, set the timer. You have timer, we all have timers on our watch, on our clock, on our phones, on our stoves. So, so just, and the other, the other um, one is I can send you the, the PowerPoint from last week. It talks all about this for parenting. Um, and the other thing is make a sign, put it on your door that says mommy's on a call or daddy's on, you know, on a, working and, and then teach your kids what an emergency is. 
<laughs> that's all. This is an emergency. This is A, B, and C is when you interrupt me. C. And when you, we get to C, then you can interrupt me. So. <laughs>